I hope you are well. Um, just waiting a little bit longer, just to make sure everybody is into the webinar. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all doing great and uh, eager to get back to school. Um, I think that's just about everyone that's joined, so let's get started, shall we? My name's Hayley and I'm going to be taking you through today's webinar. And we're looking at that introduction to Education City for getting back into school and bubble learning. Now it's something that you might be using in your school, you might just be going back normally but having certain things set up in your school. Hopefully the tools I'm going to show you today will help you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so as I said, my name's Hayley and what we're gonna look at is we're going to look at the user upload, make sure that your students are uploaded onto the accounts, the grouping function that is available for you, um, my cities in terms of planning and setting work, and obviously the resources that can go into those my cities. So that is our plan for today. Now, I need to point out to you the account I'm using is a made up school, so please do not worry about any names that you might see, they are all made up. Um, also, if we're going through and you've got any questions for me, on um, the bottom screen, you might be able to see there's a Q&A function. If you click into that, you can ask a question live and hopefully I will be able to answer it for you. If you don't want me to, um, to know your name or to show your name, there is an anonymous button as well. So you can click onto that button and it will just appear as an anonymous question. I think that is about everything. So, um, Let's get started, shall we? Head over to Education City and we can begin. And here I am on Education City. Now, user upload is really important if you're going to get the most out of your Education City subscription. This might be something that is already done for you. You might have a certain person in the school that does it for you. But for those of you that don't know, it is in the users area just here. There we are. And you'll be able to see you've got your students there, your teachers, your administrators, and so on and so forth. Now, what's really important is if we filter down via our class, the first thing we need to make sure to do is to get rid of those upper year groups. We need to um, get rid of P7 to make way for our new early years children. So we can type in P7 just here, or indeed the class name as it appears on your account. And you'll see that has highlighted all of those students. Then you can select that information to delete. There it is just there. But make sure you've downloaded all of that um, information for that year group from the success tracker before you have done this. Make sure you've got all that information collated before you delete them from the Education City system. What you can then do is select everybody else, here they all are, and export those into, if I click onto actions, we can export those into a CSV. What you can then do is open that up as an Excel, change the class names, and re-upload it through upload and edit. Now if you didn't get all of that or you're not quite sure don't worry because we have a really handy video on how to do that on our YouTube page so it's all about the user upload so have a look on our YouTube page Education City user upload and that will talk you through. While we're here let's explore the grouping function now I think this is going to be really important for the new academic year not only for those students who have um, maybe gone downhill in the summer slide or have lost learning um, throughout Covid but to make sure that those children in your class are in the correct bubble of learning maybe for different subjects or you might have certain houses in your classroom that you want the children to work in for maybe mixed projects well, you can see I've got loads of different groups here. And the rule is a child can belong to as many groups as you can think of, and you can create as many groups as you need to. So not really many rules. 
You can also go across levels. So you could have P1 and P2 children in the same group if you need to. As always, Education City will talk you through. You can click on to add group. Always worthwhile popping your initials in the front of the group name, I think, because then it's easy to find. You know which groups are yours. And then you can pop in the group name. So these might be my triangle students. And obviously you can put in whatever name you want. I always used Harry Potter houses when I was teaching. <laughs> there we go. Um, you can then search for students via their name, but the great thing is here as well, you can filter via each student class. So if I'm looking for P4, I can type in P4, click search, and you'll notice all of those P4 students come up. And as always, if you've got class names, maybe they're named after trees, superheroes, whatever they're named after, um, pop that in and you can see that it will filter down to just those students. Now you can see here you've got a list of which groups these students are already in. Some of them are in two, some of them are in three. And you'll be able to see, for example, I've got an SEND group just there as well. So this might be um, maybe intervention groups or focus groups that you want to focus on with specific children, maybe for loss of learning in a particular subject area. Whatever you want to do, it's the same process. Simply select the students that you're after, using the box tick, move them, and you can see now students in this group are those ones just there. If you add a student in mistakenly, don't worry, you can always select the box next to their name and remove them from that group as well. And make sure you save. There we go, group created successfully. All done. And now if I go backwards, using my breadcrumb trail just here to the groups, you'll be able to see that new one, new group I've just created just there. And this grouping function comes in really, really handy. You can see we've got a bit of a flasher there just talking us through that. Um, it comes in really useful when we are setting work for students. So back to the homepage, because if we are setting work for students, we're going to need our My Cities. There they are, just there, your classwork and your homework. Now, you may not know this already, but over the summer, Education City had a massive upgrade, meaning all of our tools are now available on an iPad or a tablet. There are no flash um, contents in here. Everything is available without flash. What that means is you can use it however the students need to use it, whether in school or at home. Another upgrade is that you might find that our curricular map has changed slightly. So you can head into your subject area and it's a lot clearer. And my favorite thing, it's color coded. We can head into one of our groups. I'm gonna head into reading. Let's go into this one. And we can find that objective for um, the curriculum that we're looking at open this up now in this scenario it is the curriculum for excellence on this scottish account and you can see all of the tools that we've got now blue is obviously an activity those of you who are familiar with the all of the different tool types you'll be able to see the different ones there we've got red for learn screens orange for think kits green for topic tools all color coded my favorite thing and on that note, explore the new topic tools. There's some fantastic new ones being put into place. Have a look at those in the subject area. Now, as I mentioned earlier, once we've done this, we can go through and we can select those tools to pop into our folder. You can create a folder and pop the tools in, but you can always as well click on and you can create a folder there and then clicking in new classwork or new homework. You can type in reading, create that folder and we can start adding things in just there. And obviously you can add as much tools in as you need to. 
Also, check out the search content area. We've got some great new tools for PSHE and wellbeing for this academic year. Have a look at those. Now, don't forget, once you've got that My City created, you can then um, give the My City to groups. We can see we've got the tool in there that I've just added. I'm going to have a look for some games because that's another tool that we've got added in this academic year. Loads of games, new games, in addition to the Play Live. There's some fantastic ones that students will love. And again, it tells you the objectives that we've got just there and we can add those into the folder as we need to. Then in your students, you can search for that bubble in the grouping area. So I'm going to give this to my triangle group just there. There they all are. So you can um, differentiate that learning really, really easily for different groups of students. And don't forget as well, if you don't want to give to a group, you can also give to individual students. This meaning that if you have got any students that are specifically behind or students indeed that are above their peers or more advanced than their peers, you can create specific folders for them too. There we go. So heading back to the home page, that's your users are uploaded, putting students into their groups for their bubbles, creating those homework and assigning those to your different groups of students as well. Don't forget, we've got our quick links to our times tables, phonics, online safety, as well as the play lives. And make sure to check out the printable resources as well as the teacher resource pack. I really do hope that has been useful to you. But as always, if you've got any questions for us, you can get in touch via our email address customer services at educationcity.com. Thank you for listening. We do hope it has been useful. And as always, stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.